All right, everyone, here's another uh, shuttle bus video. People seem to like it, and I came across another interesting issue, so I thought I'd go ahead and take a video here. This is a 2015 Chevrolet 4500 with a 6.6 .6 Duramax diesel in it. And the problem they're complaining about on this bus is the oil pressure drops to zero while you're driving. So in other words, what they're complaining about is they'd be driving along and I've already got it taken apart. I couldn't get it to do it this morning when I brought it in. It only does it when it's hot and it's a cold day out there so I couldn't get it to do it this morning. But the oil pressure gauge would drop to zero while they were driving when the steering wheel was turned in certain positions. So it's had a new engine oil pressure sensor put on it. It's had the harness rerouted and there's been no change in anything. So. I didn't think being this new of a bus and this diesel engine proven the way they are, I didn't think that it could be a uh, that it could be an internal engine oil pressure issue and there were no abnormal noises, there's nothing wrong with the engine, it's just whenever you turn the steering wheel at certain angles the oil pressure drops to zero. So I thought well it's got to be an electrical issue. So I uh, went on to service information here got some wiring diagrams here is the engine oil pressure uh, switch schematic so you've got a tan with a wire with a white tracer that is the signal for the oil pressure you have your black which is the low reference aka ground and then you have your 5 volt reference from the PCM so these three wires all lead to the engine oil pressure switch so then what I did I pulled up my uh, I pulled up some more connector end views for the PCM. This is the black connector. It's connector X2. And as you can see, number 41 here. You look over here on your schematic. You see X2 number 41. So this is connector X2. Then you look for terminal number 41, and that's it right there. That's your low reference or the ground. It's a black wire. So then you go over here and you look at the other two. These other two are on connectors X3 and we are at numbers 30 and number 4. So you look over here, number 4 is a tan with a white tracer, that's the signal, and then the other one, which is the gray wire, that's the 5 volt reference from the PCM. GM likes to use gray and yellow wires for 5 volt reference signals. So I uh, took the PCM out, the PCM is actually sitting over here on my toolbox, and I checked the terminals there, they all looked good, I got underneath the bus and uh, disconnected the engine oil pressure switch. All the terminals on that connector were good. So I disconnected them and took the wire harnesses apart, as you can see in there. And then I uh, also disassembled the connectors so I could get the terminals out. And what I did was I took all three of those uh, circuits that you saw in my wiring diagrams here and I connected them to my jumpers. Now most likely I am going to be running new wires which is why I pulled them out all the way. If you have the proper uh, terminal tool you don't have to take them out of the connectors like this. You can just push the little terminal. It's almost like a little needle into the connector of the wire you're trying to test and test it that way. Don't jam an oversized wire into those terminals though because you'll spread them and then they won't work. So I have three wires running out of here for signal, ground, and reference. And I've got that running underneath the bus to my DVOM. And what I found was pretty interesting. I'm gonna raise the bus up a little bit on the lift here and uh, I'll show you what I found here. And I believe I found the problem to, uh, to or the solution to what's causing the engine oil pressure to appear to be dropping on this bus. Underneath the bus, on the side of the engine block, right below the cooler, this is your engine oil pressure switch right here. This one, it's variable. It's not like the Fords where it's just an open closed switch. This one is actually variable. That's why it has three wires going to it. But here's the connector. And like I said earlier, I checked the terminals and uh, they're all fine. They've got, they're good and tight. So what I did then 
was I took my voltmeter here, my ohm meter, and then I've got it set to where, uh, where if I make continuity, it beeps like so. So there you go. Whenever I'm making contact, it beeps. Now what I'm going to do, let's go over here. I've tested the other two, so I'll just plug it into this one here for demonstration purposes. I'm going to connect my black lead on the DVO1 to the signal wire that goes up to the PCM. And then I'll connect the other lead of my DVO1 to the signal wire at the oil pressure switch connector, which is this one right here. And as you can see, we've got about 0.3. Let me get it on here, Sal. We've got about 0.3 ohms. So that's right where it should be. That's in spec. That's good. The ground is also good. However, I'll show you where the problem was. If I connect my DVOM lead to the signal wire right there, which is my red test lead, or the red jumper wire, I'm sorry, and then I connect the red test lead to the signal wire. Let's get my light back. connect the red DVOM lead to the signal wire which is the tan wire with white tracer tell me if you see a problem here you can see there's 24 and a half ohms way out of spec whenever you're testing wires they should have anywhere uh, under one half ohm that wire has 24.5 ohms of resistance in the circuit for some reason. So my guess is most likely there's a wire corroded inside the insulation. So what do we do in this situation here? I know everybody has their own way of doing this, but what I like to do when it gets to a situation like this where you have no idea where the high resistance is, you tug on the wires a little bit. So like this tan wire right here, I can pull on it nothing happens it doesn't pull out if you've got a wire that's corroded within the first foot or so of the wiring if you yank on it really good it'll pull out it'll pop apart but it's not doing that and that disappears up into the front of the engine it goes behind the water pump and vanishes somewhere into that orange wiring harness up there this is going to be a nightmare to get to if i want to do this and up under the hood, I did the same thing. Just found the tan wire with white tracer, pulled on it, nothing happens. So the wire has a high resistance problem and it's somewhere between the PCM and the oil pressure switch, but I have no clue where. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the tan and white wire off at the harness here, leave the terminal on, and I'm gonna run a new wire from the PCM to the engine oil pressure switch. Rather than try to find out where it is in the harness, pull the harness out of the bus and spend hours and hours and hours doing that, it's simpler just to run a whole new wire. And in some cases, manufacturers will even warranty this. I have been told by technical assistance under some warranty claims to run new wires, such as the case with this issue here. So the fix to this is gonna be running a new wire. Here's my finished project underneath the bus. So you can see the wires neatly disappear into the wire loom where it is then ran into the new wire. And I added this wire loom here. There didn't used to be wire loom, but I went ahead and added it while I was at it for supporting the additional wire. Now, I did something a little bit different. I usually use the same gauge wire, but because the wire was going to be running unex or unprotected, and exposed up to the PCM. I ran it into this heavy gauge red wire here. This is the this is a new oil pressure signal wire that then runs up to the PCM. And uh, I get another shot from under the hood, and you can see where that runs. But that's how it looks underneath the bus. It's well protected, and where it's exposed, the wire is very thick. So we should be good under here. And here's a view from under the hood. It's 
pretty crowded down in there, but as you can see, the red wire neatly disappears inside the harness and it then runs up to that, uh, let's see, it runs up to this first connector right here, the one that has the G, the white G written on it. That's the one that it runs into. So now, start it up, make sure no coat's set, and make sure the oil gauge is working properly. And this will be good to go. There we go. That's a fix. Now we've got oil pressure again. Well, we've had oil pressure all along. Now the indicator's just working properly.